Hey, what's up guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Cup Media back with another Dokkan battle video. So at this point, most of you should already know that Intkit Goku is going to be the next Dokkan Fest on Global. And the purpose of today's video is really to help those of you who are a little bit on the fence or a little bit unsure about whether or not you want to summon for him once he comes out by providing you with all the relevant information you need to make an informed summoning decision. Now, what we're going to do here is start off by taking a quick look at the int kit Goku himself to see exactly what he can do. And then we're going to pop over to his categories that he leads to see what those look like. And also we're going to take a look at the JP banner because that's most likely what the global banner will also look like or at least be very similar to it. And finally, we're going to end off this video by watching the super attack animations for this unit together because I know that's really, really important to a lot of people as well. So if all that sounds good to you guys, then let's jump right into it. We're going to start off with the Int Kid Goku himself. And what I'm actually going to do is zoom in a little bit here so you guys can better see the details. There we go. Okay, so his name is Decisive Punch Goku Youth and his leader skill, which he has two of. The first one is DB Saga Category Key Plus 3, HP, Attack and Defense Plus 170%, which is awesome because that's across the board for HP, Attack and Defense. Or... Youth category, key plus 3, HP, attack, defense, plus 150%, which is also very respectable. All right, his super attack now is Bending Kamehameha, causes immense damage with a medium chance to stun the enemy, which is a 30% chance, and his passive, the final wager, is really long. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but we'll get through it. All right, so first things first, attack and defense, plus 77% at the start of the turn, so that's always there. Raises attack by up to 59%. The more HP you have remaining, the greater the attack boost up to a max of 59%, and defense by up to 59% as well, the less HP remaining, the greater the defense boost. So essentially, when you're at max HP, you're going to have the full 59% attack boost, but you're also going to get none of that defense boost, I'm pretty sure. But of course, as your HP goes lower, you're going to get less of that attack boost, but more of the defense boost. So he's going to get more tanky as you get lower in HP. And uh, lastly, actually no, the third part of his passive now is key plus one, an attack and defense plus 10%, up to 59% at the start of each turn. So every single turn he gets more key, he gets more attack, he gets more defense, and he'll get overall stronger. And last but not least, performs a guaranteed critical hit when HP is 59% or below once only. So yeah, like I said, a lot of stuff going on here, but once you break it down into its different components, there's four different parts and it's not too hard to understand. So there you go, there's his passive and his active skill. It's called Penetrate, where essentially he just like punches a hole through anybody he's fighting and it causes ultimate damage to the enemy. Ultimate damage is just absolutely ridiculous. And uh, the condition to activate it is um, you have to be below 59% HP and it's only once, of course. So you can't use it multiple times per fight, but it does reset if you are in like uh, Super Battle Road, for example, where there are multiple fights, every single fight it's going to reset, so you can use it, you know, once per fight in theory. And uh, so this is active skill, we'll see all the, you know, animations for that, as well as his super attack uh, at the end of this video. And his links are Kamehameha, Guidance of the Dragon Balls, All in the Family, The Innocence, Incredible Adventure, Turtle School, and Fierce Battle. And his categories are Low Class Warrior, Pure Saiyans, Goku's Family, Dragon Ball Seekers, Youth, and DB Saga. So. There's all you really need to know about this Int Kid Goku. Um, I gotta say, he is a very, very cool unit for sure. His an his animations are ridiculously awesome. You guys will see that in a second. And uh, he also can hit quite hard once you get to the later stages of the fight, especially if you include the damage you can get from that active skill as well. So, uh, really good unit overall. Definitely worth having in your box and uh, definitely a unit I would love to have. But you also have to take into consideration some other stuff too, which is what we're going to look at now. Uh, we're going to start off with the categories here. The first one is the, um, I believe this is the DB Saga. Yeah, this is the DB Saga category. I'm using the Dokkan Battle Optimizer, by the way, uh, for this. So this is the full category you guys see here. And I'm not going to lie, it's not the most exciting category uh, out there. Obviously, there are a few standouts here, like the uh, Goku and Arale here. And they hit, you know, very, very hard. They're extremely good free to play LR, and everybody should have them if they, you know, spent the time to grind them out. So 
uh, that's really good. But aside from that, there's nothing else too exciting here from what I can see. I mean, there's some good units, obviously. Uh, a lot of free-to-play units, a lot of uh, DB Saga, like from the Dragon Ball Banner, World Tournament Banner uh, units here as well. But, you know, nothing that's going to get people too excited overall. But like I said, um, you know, they all get 170% boost, keep less 3. So at least, you know, they're going to get a very solid boost from the Kid Goku. But the more exciting category out of the two leader skills here is definitely the youth category. And as you can see, a lot more, at least a couple more, you know, much more exciting units here, right? So as you can see, we got the uh, LR, Goten, and Trunks who hit very hard. I think they're actually criminally underrated in my opinion. Um, there's also, of course, Goku and Arali are still here. We got LR, Gohan, who's still a monster to this day despite... You know, being a pretty old unit, we also got a lot of Gotenks, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, who should probably be getting a Extreme Z Awakening, if not for the next EZA on Global, then the one after it, so we don't have to wait too long for that, and he's going to be an absolute monster once he gets that. Um, you know, EZA Goten is really, really good here as well, and uh, some other stuff too I'm sure I'm missing, but, you know, I'm not going to talk about everything, but, you know, overall, a lot more exciting. Oh, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks here for the, the physical one too is a monster too, of course, you guys know that. But yeah, um, overall, a much more exciting pool of units for this one. But, I mean, if we're being real, like, if you're comparing it to some of the more recent categories on Global, like, uh, you know, Goku's Family, uh, with the Goten and Gohan as lead, um, as well as, uh, you know, Siblings Bond, same leader again, or, you know, the new Super Saiyan category on JP. Uh, these two categories combined are still really not that exciting, not that hype, not that broken. When you take a look at, like, just how insane the Super Saiyan category is on JP. And, uh, you know, that, that might devalue this Goku a little bit for you, because, you know, his... His team is not like the the craziest, the most hype out there. So, I mean, I'm not gonna say too much more about that. I'll you know I'll leave you guys to uh, decide for yourself whether or not you feel like the teams here are enough for you to want to summon. And uh, so there are the categories. Yeah, the youth category is here, and the one before that we just looked at is the DB Saga category. And they of course will get better over time, but right now. This is what they look like on Global. Um, what's missing here is actually the new tech Roshi, as well as the STR Demon King Piccolo, which is coming with the Int Kid Goku. So uh, you guys will definitely see those in this category too. But I don't know if that's going to be enough still to get you guys to summon. But we're going to move on now to the banner here. Now, I'm going to be honest. Um, the banner on JP was okay, but definitely not... I mean, it could have been more exciting. It could have been better, in my opinion. That's just me. Of course, when I, whenever I say these things, I kind of go based off, you know, someone who's been playing the game for a while and uh, not necessarily like a beginner. So if you guys have been playing this game for, you know, only a couple months, maybe six months, something like that, um, you're going to have a different perspective. It's going to be, you know, different value for different units, different banners, stuff like that for you because you're going to be missing a lot of stuff, right? And, you know, taking a look here, there's still some very, very good units on this banner, but there are going to be better ones, you know, soon after this one. The four-year anniversary, I can't stress this enough. The four-year anniversary on Global is coming out literally, or is starting literally like a month and a bit after this banner drops. So, um... That's definitely something you should consider. That's something you should talk about or, or think about rather um, because those banners are going to be way, way better than this one. And as far as value for your stones, those ones, those ones are also going to have discounts. They might also include tickets for Global as well. You, you don't really know because sometimes they do these major celebrations different on Global versus JP. JP never got tickets, but Global could get tickets for the four-year banners too. It's hard to say, but I'm just saying like the value is going to be much higher. But anyways, let's talk about this banner real quick. Um, we got two, actually three new units in total. So of course the Int Kid Goku is here, but also we have a new Tech Master Roshi and a uh, STR Demon King Piccolo. And both of these are actually very, very good units. I'll take a, I'll show you guys real quick what they do. So here's the Demon King Piccolo and uh, he's the db saga or a 120 percent db saga leader category key plus three hp attack and defense plus 120 percent or extreme sdr types key plus three hp attack and defense plus 90 percent super attack causes supreme damage and greatly lowers attack and his passive is actually pretty ridiculous defense plus 100 percent and also key plus three and attack plus 200 percent for five turns from the start of the turn and then after five turns, he gets key plus two and attack plus 120% from starting starting from the sixth turn. So 
Uh, basically, for most of the fight, I mean, at least for your average fight, that's going to last like 5-6 turns, he's going to have Q plus 3, attack plus 200%, and defense plus 100%. And even though he has a supreme damage multiplier, um, he's going to easily be doing, you know, 1 to 1.5 mil damage on a 170% uh, lead team. And, uh, you know, for a non Dokkan Fest exclusive unit, that's really, really good. And we're gonna move on now to the Tech Master Rochi here, who is even more ridiculous with his passive. Um, so he's also a DB Saga leader as well. But he also gives super type, super tech types, key plus three, HP attack defense plus 90%. His super attack causes supreme damage once again and seals super attack. And his passive, power of self-sacrifice, defense plus 150% at the start of the turn. So that's really good. But also attack plus 628%. That's not a typo. That's not a mistake. He gets attack plus 628%. Defense minus 100% and performs a critical hit when performing a super attack once only while stunning himself and attacked enemy. So um, it's a little bit confusing with the wording to be honest, but essentially this attack plus 628% is a one-time thing. Basically, it's just like one massive nuke and uh, he becomes kind of useless after that. I mean, he can still tank because he always gets that 150% defense. Um, although after he supers, he's going to lose 100% defense and also uh, stun himself. You can see here, stunning himself and the attacked enemy. But he also stuns the enemy too, if the enemy is able to be stunned. And he also seals them. And he also performs a guaranteed critical. So um, I guess you can think of him as like the ultimate like nuke, like one-time nuke card. I mean, he's not your traditional nuker since he doesn't get a percentage based on number of orbs, but 628% is absolutely massive, even though it can only be used once, and I've seen a lot of people use him for um, punching bag, right? And I've seen some crazy numbers with that, So, or punching machine, punch machine, whatever you want to call it. I don't remember the exact name for it, but um, that event where you're trying to get as high of a damage number as possible, he's really, really good for that. So... Um, very cool unit, really crazy passive, and you know, it's really unique, I like that. So there's the Roshi for you, we're gonna pop back to the banner now. So you got those two guys who are, like I said, really good, uh, the Int Goku himself is very good as well. And then the rest of these units, you know, we got the STR Super Boo, who I personally don't care too much about, I'm not gonna lie, but his category is pretty cool. I don't think he's the best Dokkan Fest exclusive out there, but he's not bad either. Uh, we have Physical Super Vegito, who is still extremely, extremely good, even though he's been featured on a lot of banners at this point. So I think a lot of people are probably going to have him with like two to three dupes, if not rainbowed. But if you don't have him, he's definitely someone you want to have. So, you know, he could be pretty exciting for some people. We have Physical Omega Shenron, who is a monster also, but he's been featured so many times that... I, I, I know a lot of people out there who haven't rainbowed already, and I know that, you know, people are tired of seeing him on banners, seeing him featured. Um, there is a potential that it could be different, you know, he could be swapped out, possibly, uh, as well as the Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, who I think plenty of people have rainbowed as well at this point, just because these guys have been uh, featured, like, so many times in recent banners over the last 12 months. You know, it, it, they're really not like too welcome <laughs> to, for people to, to see on this banner, but um, you never know. Like I said, there could be some changes, but a lot of times, actually recently, like based on recent memory, they haven't changed these JP banners a lot when they came to Global. So there's a good chance also that this could be the exact banner we see on Global. So um, if this is the exact banner, honestly, it's not very appealing to someone like myself. I think it's not going to be very appealing to a lot of people who have played this game for a while as well. And uh, the four year anniversary banners are going to be much better and they're definitely going to have at least three plus one discounts with the fourth free multi um, and uh, possibly tickets as well. Now, I don't want to put that information out there in case it's not true because it could not happen. Oh, also, another thing I wanted to mention is the fact that with the four year anniversary, we're going to get those gacha coins for every summon that allows us to trade in those coins for like Dokkan Fest exclusives and uh, also LRs with the gold coins. If you spend your stones right now, you're not gonna get any coins for doing the summons, whereas for uh, the four year anniversary and beyond, you're gonna get coins for your summons, which is basically more value for your stones once again. So there's a lot of things to consider. Like I said, the, this banner is okay, but it's really not that exciting in my opinion. It could be very exciting to you if you guys really love Dragon Ball and the Dragon Ball characters, and also maybe you love Super Boo, maybe you love 
uh, you need physical Super Vegito, something like that, then hey, this could be a good banner for you. I would still not recommend people spend too much because the four year anniversary is coming, guys. And even though we're gonna get a lot of stones for that anniversary, for that celebration, you know, you never know how many stones you'll really need to, to pull that LR Super Saiyan 4 Goku, that LR Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, and anything else you want on those banners. So the choice is yours, but this banner, you know, doesn't necessarily get me that hyped. All right. We're gonna move on now to the super attack animations. I'm sure this is the moment that a lot of you have been very excited for. And as always, I gotta give a huge shout out to my boy EBZ World for posting all these super attacks and making you know these videos a lot easier, right? Um, let's just get it started. It's gonna show you both the, uh, actually all three of the uh, Dokkan Fest Kid Goku as well as the Demon King Piccolo and Master Roshi super attacks. Here we go. Okay, so it looks like we're starting with the Roshi here. Damn. That was really nice. It's really, really nice. Okay, so this is the regular super attack for the TUR Int Kid Goku. The uh, bending Kamehameha. And now it's the Mickey King Piccolo. I love those close-ups, man. Alright, so that's the Demon King Piccolo. And last but not least, the active skill for the Kid Goku. So, obviously that was awesome. Uh, it's been actually such a long time since I've watched those animations, I forgot how good they were. And they're all really good, like they're all really, really well done. The Roshi's awesome, the Demon King Piccolo's looks awesome, but especially, especially the Int Kid Goku Super, and especially that active skill. Man, I forgot how awesome that active skill was where he punches a hole through. I mean, it, it showed Demon King Piccolo, but I'm pretty sure he just... I think that applies to... Actually, I'm not sure if it's always Demon King Piccolo in the active skill, or does he punch a hole through anything that he fight? I don't know. I don't remember exactly. Obviously, I never ran him myself on JP. I didn't have him, but... Um, either way, man, it's freaking dope. It's it's such an awesome active skill. The voice acting is amazing, as always. And uh, just watching that right now makes me want to summon for him, honestly. But I guess right now it's time for my recommendation, and I honestly can't recommend people to summon on it like as, as i show, showed you like he's a good unit his categories could be a little bit more exciting uh his banner could be a little bit more exciting but his super attack animations are definitely insanely awesome and i think that alone will convince some people to maybe drop a few stones if you guys really need to summon i would say you know don't go beyond two or three multis at most you know keep it under control don't go crazy if you don't pull him within the first couple of multis just call it. It's not worth it. The four-year anniversary is right around the corner. It's going to be insanely, insanely awesome banners, insanely awesome units. Both the Super Saiyan 4 uh, Goku and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta banners are really, really good. So um, save your stones for that, guys. Save your stones for the gacha coins as well, which you'll get with the four-year anniversary. And, uh, you know, if you guys, you know, listen to me, listen to your boy Tiger, you will thank me for it later. It's going to be worth it. Trust me. So I gave you all the information you guys need to make as informed of a summoning decision as possible. Obviously, the choice is up to you. I can't dictate what you guys will do with your stones. All I can say is that's my recommendation. That's what I feel. That's why I'm personally going to be doing if I do make a summoning video, it might be like one multi or two multis. I know some people hate that, but sometimes I'm just like, I can't resist. I really want this unit, which I do. Like, I really want this Kid Goku. So I might drop a multi or two. You might see a very like small summoning video on my main, um, but that's going to be it. I'm not going to go beyond that because I know, even I know as someone who has like the worst self-control in the world, um, even I know that I have to save for the four year anniversary because that's just where all the fire, where the value is. So that's all I got to say, guys. Hope you guys found the video useful in some capacity. And as always, if you guys like the video, then make sure to like, 
the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button. You join the Tiger Squad now, and while you're at it, hit that notification bell too so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are freaking amazing. I love all of you. I'll see you in the next video, and uh, have a fantastic day. So I'm Tiger with Tiger Upcar Media, signing out.